Hello everyone, and welcome back to looking at games on Xbox Live Indie Games for the week of November the 13th to November 19th, 2011. Not too many games this week, actually, or should I say this past week. Only six games released. The first one, Gemologist. A game that might look a little familiar. Right, so it looks like Bejeweled, doesn't it? It's actually Bejeweled, but with a strict timer. You can see that timer going down, and if I don't get three in a row, uh, the timer goes down even more. Only way to keep the timer from going is to get three or more, or more than three in a row. So it's Bejeweled, but uh, a much more tense Bejeweled. Fast action Bejeweled, if you want. Which I'm not sure why you would. Bejeweled generally is supposed to be sort of a relaxing game, isn't it? So you can eliminate gems that are just one or two in a row. Oh, that was that was bad. You can eliminate one or two in a row just because uh, you do lose time, but that does allow you. That may allow you to uh, get three in a row lined up. If you have enough time to spare like this. Yeah. As long as you get three in a row, the entire bar fills back up. The music is quite relaxing, though. I'm not sure why, considering how uh, tense the game actually is. Just kind of got to keep moving. Huh? Well, I mean, at least, you know, it's... Doesn't have zombies. So that's something, right? Hold on. Uh, ah. I got something here. Okay, didn't do anything. I guess that was some sort of super piece. I guess I wasted it. Uh, yeah, I don't really like this game too much. I don't know. It's when I'm like I said when I think about Bejeweled, I don't really think about having to constantly... Okay, there we go. Just constantly running out of time and having to get to uh, the next gem. Well, how about we just stop there? Because that seems to be what Gemologist is all about. Um, yeah, there you go. Not really too much else to it. So that's Gemologist. Next is Red Tie Miner. That's a nice 2D look to it. So we are apparently the um, the mining manager. We fell down into this deep pit. It's a shop here for some reason, but we can't actually afford anything that's in here yet. Let's go around and see if we can find anything. Yeah, there's a lot of um, precious metals, precious gems in the rock we can use to get money. Sure. This game doesn't seem to have any zombies in it either. So I don't know how well to sell on XBlig. Though it, it does have mine in the title. 
And the graphics are... does have sort of a blocky theme, even though it is 2D and not 3D. So maybe it'll sell based on that. Still no zombies, and things aren't looking too good for it. Oh, hold on. So we have a lot of gold that's holding all this water in. Hmm. Should we let it out? Let's see what happens. I don't think it can overflow. No, it can't. Okay. Okay. There, that's what I wanted to do. Let all that water out. We'll drown after a while, but easily jump out and get the get some air. Hmm. Oh, too far. I'm not really sure what the the goal of, is the, of the game is. We keep the money every time we die, and we get warped back to the shop so we can buy stuff. We have enough money to buy all this. But if we die, we will lose all the items we bought. We'll keep the money we have, but the items will be gone. So you have to be concerned about what you buy, because you won't keep it if you die. Got a grappling hook, which lets us move around much more easily now. Though, we can easily kill ourselves by falling too far with it. I mean, it seems like a competently made game. It seems pretty good. Grappling hook controls are kind of difficult to get used to, but it's not bad. Okay, we got some barrels. Uh, sorry, barrels. Boulders. Gotta be careful because they will kill us. They can... whoops. They can roll on us and kill us. We can't just uh, pickaxe our way through them. I assume that the goal is to get as far up as we, far as up as we can, but we can't pickaxe through that, um, that vein of stone going through the wall. I don't see how we're supposed to get through these boulders. Maybe if we can direct the boulders downward. Okay, that's where the vein goes down. A lot of gems behind that vein. Probably I'm having to do something with these boulders. That didn't work out too well. See, now I lost all my items. I'll just buy the grapple. And we'll go another way, why not? Not too much to say about this game so far, really. I mean, it, it looks pretty good. I like the look of it. It seems pretty well made. It seems like, like that effort was actually put into this. So that's pleasing, considering you never really know what you're going to get on, uh, on X-Blig. It seems definitely more competent than a lot of uh, the other stuff you might see. Okay, stone vein. We can go down to get... More, more, more money, and I died. I'm assuming that the goal is to make our way up. So what's the purpose in going down? I guess just to get money, so we can buy more stuff, so we can continue to try to get up. Diamonds are worth a lot of money. I wanted to take the time to, to mine all of that... All those gems out of the stone, we'd make a lot. Oh, hold on. 
leave down here. I saw. Yep, I saw some lava. Anything we can do with that? Let's see where that pool of lava goes. Going down. Where's this? Where's this lead to? Oh, hold on. Don't want to let it out. Well, I mean, we could always see what happens when lava meets uh, water. Try to build a little passage for me right here. And. Oh. Yeah. Uh oh. Okay. So that's what happens. Water meets lava, it creates stone. I mean, so far, I haven't really seen anywhere to go to. Just a large area, a lot of gems, a lot of gold. Oh, trial ended. Well, I mean, that, that was a pretty good time while it lasted. I thought that was a, a pretty fun game. Um, like I said, it seemed like a better effort than a lot of the things I see on X-Blix, so... That, it didn't seem too bad. Um, I would not be averse to buying the game. I don't know if I will, but... I mean, it's it seems pretty good. Uh, and I'd be kind of curious to know what the kind of the goal of the game is, what you're trying to actually do, because it seemed like we were trying to get up, but... It wasn't really a whole lot of direction there, but... It, it was all right. I liked it. That was Red Time Miner. So this is 3 Destruction, which is a game that is supposed to be played in 3D. If we had the capability for that, a variety of 3D modes. I bet that looks great. I can see what it looks like on the TV, but I'm not sure what that'll look like in the video. I mean, I guess if you had red and blue glasses, this mode would probably work in the video. Okay, so we don't actually have the means to, to use 3D, so we won't be doing that. But kind of the whole point of the game is to play it in 3D, so we're kind of at a loss here. Okay, so what is the game? What, how does it work? It's, um... Sort of break out from a first-person perspective. So, I mean, if you were clamoring for breakout, 3D, then you, we have it. I'm sure someone must have game, made a game like this at some point in the past, but maybe it wasn't actually in true stereoscopic 3D. Which this game apparently is, so... I mean, if, if you've got a 3D TV, I guess that's the gimmick of the game. You have a 3D TV, you want to try something out on it. Hey, they made a game for you. We've got two, uh, two paddles this time. And it actually is not the easiest thing to tell where the balls are in relation to the things they have to hit. Because I'm supposed to... Well, how did I... How did I miss that? I'm supposed to be seeing this in 3D, of course, which I'm not. So it all kind of looks like it's on the same plane to me. That's why I say I'm kind of at a loss. I'm missing something, uh, a vital part of the 3D destruction experience. And I'm really, well, really without the 3D, it's just 3D, 3D breakout. Nothing, nothing else to it. So, without the 3D kind of missing out on the entire purpose, there is to actually play the game. I mean, I'm sure if you do have a, a brand new, you know, brand new 3D TV and you want to try it out, 
maybe you don't have a whole lot of 3D content to use it with, then here you go. Hey, great. Good for you. But being that we don't, I think that's enough of 3 destruction. It's there. If you got a 3D TV and you want to try it out. Next is Hidden in Plain Sight, which opens up with some uh, pretty nice pencil drawings. That's pretty much the only reason why I'm showing this, because unfortunately I can't seem to play it. I think it's multiplayer only. So there's two uh, games we could have tried to do with this. Ninja Party, which is one, find yourself, find the, your character, then kill other players or touch all statues. Hit Y for Smoke Bomb, just like real life. That's what I usually, the advice I usually like to tell people. Hit Y for Smoke Bomb. Catch a Thief, find yourself, collect coins, don't get shot. Snipers, discover and shoot the thieves. Use Y to mark the innocent. So basically, I guess, some players are the thieves and some players are the snipers. So that's how this all works. Knights, protect the royalty, royalty kill ninjas. I like the idea uh, that this has a knights versus ninjas mode. Just like how it really was back in feudal times. For some reason, that part never gets covered in the history books. Race to the finish line. Okay, just a race. Assassin, let's see. Kill teammates, kill NPCs, don't get shot. Seems similar to what we already saw. Okay, so those are the modes. Unfortunately, we can't seem to play it because I don't have three other players here. Doesn't seem like uh, I can have the AI do join in. So, maybe that could have been good, but I don't know. Welcome to uh, Perkunus' Dragon. We were greeted by um, very well rendered um, person, a shaman, I think, who is looking at us disapprovingly. I think that's what that expression is. Uh, so this game, unlike a lot of the exploit games we've been seeing, it has a story and cutscenes, and we'll get to see uh, we'll get to see them. So let's start the new campaign and see what the story of Perkunus' Dragon is all about. Episode 1, Lost in an Unknown Land. Uh, we can choose from e easy, medium, hard, and Japan. I'll just go with easy, I think. Once upon a time, when people could not yet grasp the laws of nature, they would pray to the gods for help with the difficulties in their lives. They would offer sacrifices upon the altars when droids arrived and the crop widows under the ruthless sunbeams. They called upon the gods for help when they suffered from hunger, cold, or sickness. Not much changed during the reign of Duke Radbot. A strange disease attacked his country, quietly and insidiously, killing humans and animals alike. Radbot prayed to Great Bracunas, and the god heard his prayers. However, instead of help, he sent a dragon. <laughs> So there you go. That's our story. I wish my name was Rad Bod. That is a great name. So, as you saw, the people are in trouble. So Rad Bod prayed to his god, but the god did not send help. He sent a dragon. We are that dragon. It's a beautiful loading screen, isn't it? Use the left stick for moving the dragon. Use the RT button to create a fireball. Mm -hmm. Destroy as many starlings as you can. For each dead starling, you will get some experience points. Try to fill your experience bar quickly. So we, the mighty dragon, will be killing some small birds. Okay. 
does not really seem befitting of a of a noble dragon, does it? Just helpless birds, right? Pretty much vomiting fire all over. Hold on, it's kind of a lot of birds, actually. Whoa, what was that? Oh yeah, it's a lot of birds. I mean, I guess we can't blame the birds from being angry. We just started murdering their kind. Still, that would be pretty embarrassing for the dragon to be killed by starlings. Especially the dragon sent by God. Kind of a lame dragon, isn't it? Anyway, you can kind of see what kind of game this is. It's a top-down shooter. Yay! Oh. Come, okay. Blue starlings coming out of the portal. And I, I think that's what's happening, because this is very colorful, and I actually can't really tell what's happening. Hopefully we get another great cutscene after this is over. I don't even, I'm not sure just what's really happening. I won. Yeah, what was that? That is a good question. I would like to know. The game itself seems a bit confused as to what's going on. You got your first skill point. Use the LT button to open the skill map. Okay. All right. Choose one of the magic skills and upgrade it with your skill point. Use the left stick to navigate through the magic skills. Use the A button to upgrade the magic skill. All right, let's just upgrade our fireball, I guess. Blue X button for the setting screen. I'm mostly just concerned with getting through the starling attack alive. No, uh, no people around. Just a lot of birds. Oh, there's a person. And he's watching what's going on, but I guess... I guess he can't actually help us. Burn it out, ten... Ex I don't know what that means. I get extra points for burning the trees, I guess? Is that what that... That is? Oh, I... Oh no, God put our dragon down in the wrong place entirely. I like how this farmer is completely unfazed with having this conversation with a dragon. You know, I, I think that's probably enough of Perkunus' dragon. I think um, I think we have a pretty good impression of what this game is all about, and honestly, I don't want to play it anymore. But still, thank you, Perkunis' Dragon, for those cutscenes for making this video worth it, because there wasn't really a whole lot going on today. And the final game for this week is Canyon Viaduct. No real clue from the name what this game might be about, so uh, let's see if we can figure it out. How to play? All right. Canyon Viaduct is a grand adventure game where you play as the chief of the Canyon Project whose tasks are to protect the civilians from... zombies? Okay, it's... Let's see what kind of zombie game it is, I guess. 
Centuries may try to build a con. Do the rising zombies, yeah. Zombies. You play as the chief of the Doom Project whose job is to kill zombies. Because what else would we be doing with zombies? Rescue me from the zombies and build the bridge. So do we have to both rescue him and... Oh, hold on. Hold on. Uh, oh, he needs help and he's being... Look at all those zombies that are attacking him. Can we zoom? Okay, we can zoom in. Those are realistic zombie sound effects, I know. I've played plenty of zombie games. Those are what zombies sound like. Good, that is a good job. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm ready for action. Bring it on. Bring on those zombies. I like how the sprite for the bullets are like... F you're seeing them from uh, an overhead perspective instead of from behind. Why isn't the guy moving? You think he might be running away from the zombies. Well, he does seem to be teleporting around. Uh, I guess I, I guess I lost. <laughs> yeah, I'll try again. Are you kidding me? I love zombie shooters. You know, I think that the creator of this game made a mistake. He didn't put the word zombie in the name of the game, so this probably will not sell very well on Xplig. You see, if you're putting zombies in your game, you have to make it clear to the buyer that they're getting zombies. Because if you hide the zombies, there's no point to it. Wasn't there something about building a bridge? I don't know what that was about, because all I've been doing is shooting these zombies. What if you made it... What? Are there really that many zombies there? I don't think there were. Okay, so, trial period expired, and man, that's a shame. I wish I could play more of this, but the only way to do it is to is to buy the game. So, you know, the amount of, of time that we've played, that we've been with Canyon Viaduct is surely enough to form the kind of emotional connection, the, the kind of bond that you need to say, I want to play this game. This is what I want to spend my time with. You look at the games that are coming out now, you know, a lot of people playing Skyrim. Uh, Skyward Sword is coming out soon. No. Mm-mm. Canyon Viaduct, you've sold me on you. And there are a lot of games on Xplig where you shoot zombies. But Canyon Viaduct has that, that something special. I don't know if it was the... I don't know if it was the lousy graphics or the, the terrible sound effect of the zombies. But it had that something. It showed me something today. And... Yes, that delayed sound effect was pretty good, too. But... A whole dollar? I don't know. Oh, wait. Sex? Zero out of three? There's no sex in this game? Is that what you're telling me? Canyon Viaduct? You're holding out on me? Well, maybe Canyon Viaduct 2 will will have a 3 out of 3. Maybe they'll learn their lesson. Got to give the give got to give the people what they want. You can't reward them for for holding out on the kind of content that you want from a zombie game. So there how about that? How about making a zombie game but it's a dating sim? But if that was the case, would it be you're the zombie or you're dating a zombie? I'll have to think of something there. I think there's an idea there. I'll have to think about that. Yeah, I think there's something there. But that was it 
for this week's releases on Xbox Live Indie Games. Not that many. Not a whole lot to look at, though Red Tie Miner did seem pretty good. Um, there was actually supposed to be a seventh game this week. There was a game released called uh, Who's the Daddy? However, midweek that game disappeared from the service. Uh, but, but fear not, don't worry. Um, Xbox Live did not take it down. Rather, the developer, Silver Dollar Games, took the game down themselves so they can tweak it, and they'll be putting it back up. Hopefully that'll be this week, so maybe we'll see that uh, in next week's video. So look forward to that. Who's the Daddy from Silver Dollar Games? Maybe that'll be next week. But that's next week, and this was, this was all for this week. See, see you next time, I guess. You know, yeah, I should really kind of apologize. That last bit with Canyon Viaduct, I mentioned Skyrim and Zelda. I really shouldn't have brought that, that brought those up. There's no reason for me to do that. That's just silly. I was just trying to get the point across that I don't really get why a lot of these demos that we've been looking at really don't try to do anything at all to, to sell you on the game itself, you know? You kind of figure that if you put the work into making some kind of game, you probably want the demo to actually reflect that. I don't really understand why a lot of the demos we've seen do absolutely nothing at all to sell the player on the game itself. But mentioning Zelda and Skyrim, really, there was no point to that. That's silly. So I'm, I shouldn't mention an indie game to games like that. So yeah, that, was, that was silly. But you know what's not silly? This. So, you remember last week we were talking about the best-selling games on Xblig and how a bunch of them were the Minecraft clones? Well, one of them, Fortress Craft, we can see right here, sold over 400,000 copies and has made over a million dollars so far. Hey, there, there you go. Great. I would assume Castle Miner Z will do even better since that's Minecraft and zombies. So that has to that has to do even better. How can it not? So what are you doing? What are you sitting around there for? You know, you you can see right here how to make a million dollars. It's it's quite obvious. Just just take someone else's game and remake it for Xblig and apparently that that'll sell. Huh. Well, now that you know how to, now that you know the key how to do it, go out and do it. You know what's going to sell. You know that there's apparently no legal repercussions to doing it. So why not flood Xblig with Minecraft clones? In fact, I, I encourage Notch to, to release an easy-to-use kit to allow people to compile their own Minecraft games for XNA so we can all flood Xblig with our own Minecraft clones. I, I encourage that to happen because that is apparently what the Xblig audience wants. Or <laughs> made over a million dollars.